what, in your view, are, are the obstacles when, when trying to bridge the psychology of uh, Carl Gustav Jung and, and Christianity? I think I can give, make a very simple answer to this. Um, the obstacle is psychological absolutism. And in this regard, Wolfgang Gigerich, I think, is, is a, an extremely important figure because he's, he's picked this up from Jung, that psychology has no outside, it has no limits, it has to be absolute, and he's really run with it. And so he's gotten rid of those parts of Jung which don't really agree with psychological absolutism. So what is psychological absolutism? It means a psychology that has no outside, as we just said, but it also means a psychology that owes nothing to theology, that doesn't take any... That, that doesn't stand to be critiqued in any regard from anything beyond psyche, that whether that's a discourse such as theology or metaphysics, or whether it's actually God, God's self. You know, you, I think Gigerich is correct that a psycho, psychological absolutism is, has to be atheistic. It's just a doctrine of the human being. And I think that here, there really is no there is no, there is, there is not much uh, place for dialogue with, let's let's say, mainstream Christianity. I mean, there's a tradition of Christian atheism, and that 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 could have some interesting possibilities here. But in terms of, let's say, Pauline Christianity, or mainstream Protestant, Catholic, uh, and Eastern Orthodox Christianity, uh, psychology cannot be absolutized, and there are reasons for this absolutization. And interestingly, they don't have anything to do with the psychology of Jung. They have to do with some of its philosophical presuppositions, in particular with his commitment to Kant and the way he resolves the Kantian dilemma of, you know, we only deal with appearances. We don't know what the thing is in itself. Um, there's another way of dealing with that problem rather than just totalizing psychology. A totalized psychology becomes like psychological idealism. But there's another way in which we can we can deal with the Kantian problem. We can see this in German idealism, and that is to speak of, um, you know, of a psychology that, let's say, is open, like an open system, a psychology that is in dialogue with something outside of itself. Let's say reality, a psychology which recognizes uh, the real as in some way excessive of the ideal or of the psychological, and that's a first step towards let's say, understanding psychologically what a Christian means by the Trinity. Because a Christian does not mean merely the contents of the psyche by the Trinity. They mean the creator of heaven and earth. So if, if we're going to listen to the Christian, and rather, rather than saying, oh, well, you're just talking about things that psychology has proven to be purely imminent to psyche, if we're going to listen to them and, and allow the Christian to speak in their own terms, we'll have to see that there's there are legitimate reasons for contesting this absolutization of psychology. Um, and, you know, the question of dealing with the transcendent comes up, but it's not as though it's impossible to have a psychology which is also uh, open to the transcendent. In fact, I think that there, that is the practice of many psychologists, uh, but, there, but on the level of theory, we could also have a psychological theory that recognizes, let's say, the finitude the limitations of psychology, that psychology ultimately is contained by something greater than itself, call it reality, and that a, a psychological discourse ultimately will have to be, uh, find itself limited by factors that lie outside of its purview. But, 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 but would you say that Jung himself was sort of a, a modern psychological absolutism, or you mean it more became that? Or? Well, this is a very interesting question, and that was exactly what Gigerich and I got into uh, verbal spat over in a journal a few years ago, where I tried to argue that there's nothing essentially absolutizing or idealist about Jung's psychology, although it could coherently be developed in that direction, and Gigerich has done so, but one could develop it in another direction. And just as Gigerich has had to kind of correct certain aspects of Jung which don't line up with psychological absolutism, so too would, let's say, a, a finite psychology have to correct certain absolutizing features in Jung. But these corrections are going to happen at least in terms of, uh, of uh, understanding a psychology of the finite or a finite psychology. These corrections are not going to be merely psychological. They're not going to be moves within psychology. They're going to have to be philosophical moves. For example, we're going to have to deal with, let's say, Kant and the way Jung has accepted Kant's philosophical argument 
for the impossibility of metaphysical knowledge. Uh, that's not a psychological point. That's a philosophical point, which can, which Jung takes as a kind of a foundation. That that can be corrected. There's a history of dealing with that problem. In fact, one can show that Kant himself is incoherent on the thing in itself, and that you know we we need to do some philosophical work here in order to correct the the assumptions of psychology, uh, so that we do not land up in a kind of absolutized psychology or psychological idealism such as Gigerich has produced. Now, if you want to be a psychological absolutist, Gigerich, I think, is far more consistent, far more consistent than Jung. But this is one of the great things about Jung. You know, he's such a wild theoretician. You know, he's like a guerrilla theorist. He's just all over the place. And that's what makes him so exciting to read. And this is why we'll be reading him for a long, long time, because he opens up so many possibilities. But we can't simply leave him where he is. And in this regard, I think Gigerich is absolutely right. You know, the next step forward is not simply to repeat Jung and uh, reproduce his kind of wild theorizing, but actually to develop something, develop lines of, of thinking from Jung, which maybe have to impose a little more consistency and coherence there than Jung himself uh, brought to the question.